CataractCoach.com Resident Stop and Shop, case number 50. So what's good and what needs improvement? So we're looking at a video of a resident performing a surgery. Let's look at the main incision. That's a pretty good incision. Good tunnel length. I like how it nicks the limbal vessels. Maybe a little on the short side, but otherwise it looks pretty good. Now that was made with the eye just full of aqueous. Now the viscal acid is going in. That looks like a dispersive viscal acid to coat the corneal endothelium. Looks like there's a nice good fill there. A couple eyelashes are exposed and touching the tear film, so we need to address that. Looks like other eyelashes have been cut off. And now it's time to make the capsule X. You can see the lighting has been switched. The two strong dots on the cornea are the retroillumination lights, the coaxial lights, and then the smaller tiny dot is the um, other light that gives illumination off to the side. And so you can see to enhance the red reflex, the stereo coaxial one is very bright and the paraxial one is not. And you can see more viscoelastic was added and the entire rexus is being done just with the cystotome. And this is a neat technique that really tests your skill as a surgeon to be able to control that thin capsule with just the friction of the point of your cystotome. And that looks like a very nice round capsule rexus. That went great. Now we are showing the whole video today at two times normal speed. This video is about nine and a half minutes in length and the original video unedited and not sped up was about 19 minutes in length. And again, this is a resident who's operating and a resident's done so far about 50 cases. This is case 50. So now I'm making a paracentesis incision on either side. That's gonna be used for a bimanual irrigation aspiration. So again, those are about 180 degrees apart. Now those look pretty good, but I like those also to barely nick the limbal vessels. And that's because that will give better long-term sealing. So now time for some hydrodissection, some balanced salt solution. Good fluid wave goes through, I like that very much. There's the whole nucleus, nice and loose in the capsule bag. That looks pretty good. You can see the golden ring of hydro delineation as well. So this is a nucleus that's really nicely freed up from the capsule bag. Now we don't know FACO settings, of course. In fact, we don't even know which country this resident from. This is a totally anonymous submission to our website. You too can submit your video at cataractcoach.com. Just follow the instructions. You can send a video, you can have your name on it, or you can have it like this, totally anonymous. So fake a probe going in the eye. Nice, reasonable fit in the incision. Careful to avoid that subincisional iris. And let's see the technique here. This is gonna be a stop and chop technique. So it's gonna be a nice central groove down the middle of the nucleus. And a couple of things here that I like. I like that the groove is nicely centered. Now the nucleus should not be moving. You need to give a sufficient amount of phaco power so that the nucleus stays still and keeping the eye in primary during the procedure. And now widening up the groove. And this resident has a good grasp that the, of the idea that the center of the nucleus is deeper and thicker and the periphery is more shallow. So this groove that's being made needs to be a little bit deeper in the center and less so a little more shallow in the periphery. So here it goes again, making a good groove. Now how deep do you make the groove? Some people judge by the width of the phaco tip. One and a half phaco tip widths is about what they're aiming for. Some people do it by the red reflex, but I think this is a pretty good style. And the surgeon now is using this ball tipped instrument in the other hand and getting a good separation. And so I do a little more separation there and then, uh, then try, but here we go, buzzing in with a higher vacuum setting, getting the chopper around the nucleus and breaking off the little piece. That looks great. That's a nice chop technique. And so, uh, again, this is two times normal speed. So if the movement looks a little choppy, it's because we've sped up the video. Now that first small quadrant's being brought towards the phaco tip. Good use of the second hand to d achieve that. And now the remainder of the quadrant from the first heminucleus is chopped again. And then each of these little sextants is now subdivided and phaco um, emulsified. So that looks great. So again, stop and chop technique. 
Stop and Shop, first described by Paul Koch from Rhode Island, USA, his idea was, yes, to make a central groove in the middle and split the two halves, much like you do for divide and conquer, but then instead of doing four quadrants with grooves, you could just bring up each, each hemi-nucleus and then phaco and emulsify it and then use the chopper to break it up. So first half is gone, nice rotation here using that chopper to bring the second hemi-nucleus in front of the phaco probe, buzzing into it. Let's look for the chopper placement and chopper goes around the equator, that looks great. Now look at the chopper design. You'll notice this chopper that's being used has a ball tip and it's not a very sharp instrument. And that just goes to show you with good technique, you don't need to have a really sharp instrument. I prefer a chopper without the ball tip. I think I have much more control with a traditional style chopper, but this just goes to show you that uh, it's the technique that's more important than the instrument. Now there's an epinuclear shell that remains, and let's see if we can get that out with just the FACO probe. The key here is to catch it with a little bit of vacuum, just like that, and it can be emulsified. I went great. So I'm gonna switch over, do some cortex removal with the irrigation aspiration probe. And so far this case is doing great. So for case number 50, I think this resin has done a beautiful job. There are some things that could be improved a little bit. I'd do a little longer tunnel length on the FACO incision. The two paracentesis incisions, I'd prefer if they were a little bit more peripheral and barely nicked limbal vessels as well. I like the capsulorexis, great control that was done there with just the cystotome. The stop and chop technique was done beautifully. The chopping part in particular went beautifully, especially considering that the instrument being used was uh, not a sharp chopper. In fact, it had a ball tip. Again, the microscope lighting has been adjusted to en enhance the red reflex. And the surgeon's doing this to get a better view of the cortex material. Again, the two round lights you see in the center of the cornea, that's the stereocoaxial illumination, and the tiny little light is the paraxial. So half the cortex removal is done. The surgeon is now going to switch hands. I'm going to have the infusion in the left and the aspirator in the right and gonna be able to go and re remove the remaining lens cortex material. And that looks great. Looks like it's probably a 23 gauge bimanual irrigation aspiration setup or close to it. And then there's the sub incisional stuff being removed and this looks pretty clean. Good job also in keeping the eye in primary throughout the surgery. Notice the eye hasn't drifted away. The eye's not being pushed out of the operating field. It stays central the whole time. Now, let's see what's going on. Infusion going in the eye, and here comes the injector. So now the eyeball is being injected without extra viscoelastic, in fact, injected with just the infusion holding open the capsule bag. And this is a uh, type of lens, an acrylic lens looks like, maybe a hydrophilic acrylic. This lens design in particular, I don't think is available in the USA. And um, now I still see one haptic above the iris, so we gotta fix that. So I think what you want to do is have the infusion in the eye because that's going to keep it inflated. And there you go, just dialed it in. Alternatively, you could use a second instrument while the infusion was with the right hand, could use the chopper or other instrument in the left hand. Since the lens was inserted with just um, infusion of bounce salt solution, there's no more viscoelastic to remove and everything looks good. We can seal up the incisions and be done. So great job by this resident. This corneal hydration here is a little excessive, a little bit more than I would normally do. It, uh, remember, is only a temporary measure, and uh, this much can cause some changes in astigmatism in the early post-op period. It'll all resolve, and there'll be no astigmatic issues later on. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you want to send your own video, please go to cataractcoach.com. There's a link for submitting your video. It can be anonymous, too. I think it'll be very helpful to get our evaluation of your technique, and we we'll want to make you an even better surgeon. Thanks for watching.